Hey. Uh, g'day everyone out there in Radio Land. <laughs> so that should be live to share now. So you can start probably any time. Any time. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Traveling in the North Country Fair Where the winds hit heavy on the borderline Remember me, for one who lives there For she once was a true love of mine See for me that her hair's hanging long that it blows and flows all down her breast See for me, her hair's hanging long But that's the way I remember her best well, I'm wondering if she remembers me at all Times I've hoped and prayed from the darkness of my nights, from the brightness of my day. Traveling in the North Country Fair Where the winds sit heavy on the borderline Remember me for one who lives there But she once was a true love of mine A true love of mine Oldfield in the studio. Welcome both. Thank you, Bianca. Good to have Thanks you both. for having us. Yes, good to have you here. Now, you've got something coming up, the Slugs Variety Gala on Saturday 12th of June. That's correct. Yes, we have. Yeah, we, we do once a year uh, a charity show for the community benefit or, or a charity. Um, in this case, it was a community-based Kangaroo Island recovery effort. Mm. It's still 18 months later. There's still Exactly. Uh, some of them are looking at empty fields, some of them are still living in containers. So it'd be nice if the people on the mainland actually, they knew that they were thinking of them. And just by putting on a show, you're actually acknowledging that what they're going through. And um, that's what we thought we'd, we'd do. Exactly. That's fantastic. Because I think, you know, with the news these days, things move so fast. <laughs> we tend to forget and move on to the next story, don't we? So it's so great that you're doing that. Yeah, they were predicting that six months oh, ago. 12, years, 12 months ago, they were saying in, in 12 months' time we'll be forgotten. A few of them, I know. And so, um, yeah, we thought, well, in 12 months' time we won't be forgetting you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know a, a few people personally and what they've been through? Yes, yes. Uh, so there's um, one guy who's a garlic, there's a garlic producer, and he's lost his house. But luckily he kept his garlic shed, so he's been able to keep his business going. So that was a... Um, 
And I know someone else who's lost their home on uh, the western end who's been through a run of bad including an accident on the farm and then had the, the fires go through and destroy his house. Um, so that's been, it's been a really tough time to varying degrees on the western end, yeah, for yeah. what they've been through. Some have really um, quite resilient and, uh, and, or have been hit lightly and some have really been hit hard and um, they need a bit of, every bit of support that they can get, so. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us um, who who the lineup is for yeah. this event. Yeah, so um, this is the best lineup we've had so far. I've been doing these shows since two thousand and fourteen, um, and two thousand and fourteen for various charity courses. And um, this one's the best one we've had. We've got Swanee, who had of course a couple of hits um, in the eighties with "Lady, What's Your Name," which mm -hmm. should have gone number one global, as far as I'm concerned. If, if you're familiar with that song, uh, if I was a carpenter. And then we've also um, got hosting Adelaide Comedian of the Year one year, Adelaide Comedies Comedian of the Year, Fabian Clark. I don't know if you've seen much of Fabian's work, but um, he's quite prolific with um, getting out there and performing in Adelaide. Done radio in Perth and here in Adelaide. Um, and then, of course, the other feature act is Rumours, with mm -hmm. the well-known Adelaide musician coordinating that, Rob Pippin. Yes, have you yes. seen much of his work? Yeah. A lot of his work. I know him quite well. Um, he's great. And he's a, a musical genius, so we're very fortunate to have him basically collaborating. He's just doing the music side of it, and we're putting the uh, comedy and we've got the juggler and a magician that I'm bringing into the uh, into the show. Okay. Let's give them a shout out. Who are they? Oh, the, the uh, well, the juggler's Michael Connell yep. from over from Melbourne. Got out, got out the right time. Yeah. <laughs> and the magician is uh, Stephen Pryor. He's known as having quite a few priors. He said he comes from a family of priors. So he's known as um, Australia's most wanted magician. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we have to come along and see him. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So it's, 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 it, I've, I've been doing these shows, whether it be comedy, all comedy or variety or just live bands, and we've never had a line-up that's yeah. come close, particularly rating it out with Dieter Horvat here. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So how many musicians in total? Three musical acts. Three musical acts. One juggler, one magician, um, and the Swannies um, hopefully will get a lot of the time because of his legend status in Australian music is unquestioned. Five decades of recording, five decades of performing. His body of work is incredible and he's just released the greatest hits album. So um, he's essentially Adelaide off of the back of supporting that and supporting um, the people of Kangaroo Island. Mm. Yeah. Lovely. And the venue, so how did you come to choose the venue? Well, um, the Irish Club has done a recent upgrade with its sound setup, so it's now really awesome for live performances. So um, had a, several thousands of dollars spent on the Irish Club. Um, well, how else? Just um, I, know I tend to go there on a Friday night reasonably regularly, yeah. so uh, and I know the capacity is reasonably good. You need a bit of capacity when you've got a big performer like Swanee coming on into a show. You need a bit of room in the room. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and the other thing is, we're actually supporting. If I've got time, one of us, of one of us has lost his life a week ago. It was on the Channel Seven News. Um, a guy called Bernie Scanlon was doing a ride from Adelaide to Darwin to raise money for his orphanage. That he pretty much got started in two thousand and seven in um, Uganda, and he had a thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand dollar goal, and. Um, We've taken up the challenge. Um, so there is a GoFundMe page, Bernie Scanlon, um, African Orphanage, if you just check that through uh, GoFundMe, donate if you, if you like. Mm -hmm. But come along on the night and there'll be opportunities with an auction, a raffle, um, to support Bernie's efforts. Um, and there'll be a bit of a story about him on the night. Um, he's been climbed Mount Everest Base Camp He's trekked through South Africa. He's trekked on the Camino Trail in um, in um, Camino Trail in Spain, all to help with either his orphanage or a child slavery. He's one of the great people that's come out of our state, and we're going to be taking up where he left off a week ago um, with his fundraising through the night. Mm. So, okay. And tickets are thirty six dollars. That's correct, yeah, $36. Um, 
So yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the um, uh, Cabaret Fringe Festival and we're very much yeah, guided by the other acts that are in the festival as far as how we've priced it. Apparently it's very competitive for a two and a half hour show. Mm. Quite a competitive pricing and considering it's got Dita in the show as well. <laughs> let, let, t talk to us a little bit about yourself, Dita. Tell us about your music and when it started. Well, I'm a folk singer. Uh, sometimes I play in a band sometimes. Sometimes I'm a bit of a clown. I feel like a clown most of the time, I guess. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, no, I guess I started doing music not too long ago, actually, I guess. Maybe around 2021. 20, and uh, I got hit by a car. Uh, come back from... I was in Victoria. I was in Victoria. I came back to Adelaide. was sort of starting off to do music stuff. And then, yeah, I got hit by a car. And I think... That really did sort of make me go, yeah, okay, I've got to do this uh, properly. Because I guess I nearly died. You what, sorry? I nearly died uh, getting hit by a car. Gee. And uh, it was, I mean, it was bad. But I mean, I look back at it now and I'm not really affected in a big way beyond just memory, I guess, uh, as, as far as like there's no scars or anything that remain. But I guess, yeah, that, that kind of incident just kind of probed me or provoked me to mm. really just try to do music properly because it's something I want to do, you know? Mm. Absolutely. And, you know, when things like that happen, you know, we hear people saying that it sort of propelled them into a, a different um, area and they, it really made them realise what was important to yeah. them and what they really want to focus on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, before that I was just sort of hanging around, doing a bit of music stuff here and there, but not really doing too much and anything like that. And I guess after that, I guess I was, yeah, in hospital and hospitalised for a while. And for a while I couldn't even play guitar and stuff like that or sing even. Because they paralysed, like, uh, half of my vocal folds running tubes down my thread, I guess. I just bumped really? them. Yeah. I could like barely talk and um, stuff like that. So but terrible. Walk, walking miracle. I said, yeah, but, but look at you now. I know. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, so, uh, I'm not. Uh, it's not lost on me that that's like. A, uh, yeah, it basically, is miraculous. You know that I didn't die. So you had a guardian angel. Uh, yes, I suppose so. You. Absolutely. Um, okay, let's give a shout out to Rob anyway from Rumours, the Fleetwood Mac show. Rob and Nanette. There's a quite a few in, in that lineup as well. They're a great band. They're uh, awesome, yeah. I've I have seen to them before performing. I haven't seen them you before. Um, but Rob's Legend status is, uh, is, yeah. is quite well known throughout Adelaide. Yeah. And uh, I've always wanted to get him on board with the project, and hopefully, there'll be more in the future. Mm -hmm. This will be the start of a good partnership. And before we finish off, Peter, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your involvement in, um, you know, the football team. Yeah, yes. Well, we're a globally touring Aussie rules. We're the greatest over 35s globally touring AFL team in the world. Wow. <laughs> well, Self-proclaimed. Um, so we just travel. We play all of our matches uh, in overseas tournaments. Um, in Asia, there's uh, about 30 teams and most of them have got Masters so I'd so we though we'll just come and join in on a tournament and go to Phuket or Bali, or Vietnam, Malaysia and play Australian rules football um, for and it's for old farts and it's just been created just to add a bit of extra adventure and excitement in the lives of um, mature age footballers when life can get a little bit more dull maybe. Yeah, yeah. So who were some of the Players. Yeah, okay, I have some famous players. You want some famous names? Well, um, whatever whatever uh, you've got. A former North Melbourne player who's played in the Premiership in 99, uh, Shannon Motlop. We call him the Candy Man, his ability to sell the candy. Uh, we've got Ricky O'Loughlin that plays for the Adelaide Crows. And, he's, um, and then we've also got uh, Luke Slattery who played for, was ca uh, vice captain of Port Adelaide Magpies. And then a whole range of country footy legends. In one tournament we went in, we had. Um, 15 male medals in one team, which is your premier mm. award in country footy, and we had 15 in one side. Um, so we've got lots of country footballers, and our origins are in the old scholars scene, so St Peter's, Sacred Heart, Ross yeah. Terra, but we'll take anyone. <laughs> That's it. Isn't it a great sport? It is. It's fantastic. We sport in are, the world. Our saying is it's the greatest sport in the world. The rest of the world just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> well, maybe they do. Maybe they do. <laughs> what, and, and what got you into footy? Like, when, when did you start? Oh, I started my first game of senior football. My first game of football was when I was 21 years of age. Yeah. So, no junior football. And then found it didn't suit me. Uh, a bit, bit held a skelter and a bit brutal. So, when I was in my early, um, uh, late 30s, I discovered Masters football. And just hit the ground running with that and found it's just a great outlet uh, on a Sunday afternoon every fortnight to come out and play. And I'm now involved with the uh, mighty West Brumbies down at Schmosh, West Lakes. Mm. And um, 
and uh, it was just a great way to keep active and um, us guys to keep that that change room talk that we all love doing, all that crap talk that goes on in a change room is great about yeah. the males to be able to share amongst each other. We get to keep that going yes. and it's it's part of our DNA, I think. Exactly, it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, boy, boys need boy time, yeah, girls that's... need girl time, right? <laughs> that's correct, absolutely. But I'll see it with my husband. He has sort of like card nights with his friends yep. online. You know, some of them are interstate and he's always on the phone with the boys or, you know, Friday night with the boys' drinks. Yep. It's Wait. just how God... Afternoon. Yeah. Pull hamstrings. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else we need to know before we wrap it up? No, I think that's fantastically covered. Um, just, just go and do a Google search of um, the Slugs Variety Garden. Just remember that um, there was a guy called Neil Diamond who didn't come out to Australia. A lot of us bought tickets. And we don't know where, whether when Swanee is going to tour again. We do not know when Swanee is going to be. You know, one day we don't know when is going to be his last tour. So this is a chance to see Swanee yeah. uh, when he's in the peak of his powers. Uh, so I would encourage people to get along and check him out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just a shout out to Swanee. Yeah. All right. Cool. Can we go out with one last song? Yeah, sure. Cool. All right. Well, I wrote this song recently. Uh, it's about... Um, Doing something I shouldn't have done, which in this case is making my ex-girlfriend a birthday cake. And uh, I think I was totally misunderstood there. I think they had like turned up to my um, house during my birthday, you know, just to say hello, because we ended up on good terms and stuff like that. So I made them this cake, and they sort of just left me on hold. And I was um, sitting there with this cake and this present I got, and I was just like, ah, oh, damn it, <laughs> that's my bad. But anyway, so this is the song. It's called cake or the birthday cake debacle or something like that. I haven't decided yet. I should say happy birthday. It's a good place to start this thing. And I've heard you've been having such a hard time lately. How much it mattered to you See, I thought I'd do my bit and get a gift To help you feel less blue It's the least I could do And it's all sitting here on my table Guess it doesn't have a shelf life now, does it? But you left me sitting here I feel I probably should have been more clear I'm not trying to be a lover, I'm just trying to cheer Up your stormy mood with this thing that I placed So would you like some cake? Would you like some cake? Yeah, yeah Wish I could paint you a picture I could show you succinctly now The painting was your thing, wasn't it? See, I'm just sitting here with this lovely gear I got you waiting as a gift now And a funny card too, I made it myself I always say I don't understand It doesn't even bother me that you've got and found another man I just wish it could have been there for breakfast when you and him wake See, it's a healthy cake Yeah, yeah mm, It's a healthy cake Yeah Oh, it's like Most of the oats and banana It doesn't even need flour Baby, or milk See, I could live Off this thing for the rest of my life Natural cacao powder Expensive maple syrup cause it's vegan I would say it doesn't hurt When somebody that you used to love treats you like dirt Maybe I'm finally hit by the pain I left in my wake I mean, fair enough I'm gonna eat this cake though Thank you very much.
cake with oats and uh, good quality maple syrup. You yes. gotta do it to him. <laughs> Are you a vegan? Uh, I mentioned the vegan thing in there. It depends who you ask. I guess uh, I mostly eat vegetarian. Um, but if a pretty vegan girl asks if I'm vegetarian, a vegan, I'll say I'm vegan, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Cheers. Very nice. All right. Thank you for coming in. No worries. Thanks for Thank having us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Awesome. Cool, that was awesome. Thanks. Sandwiches. Thank you. We can put that up there. Yeah, just make sure they know the name, Slugs Friday Gala. Yeah. There's a people Google search it. They don't yeah. know. And I love, love what the, happened in the interview. I know I did. Thank you very much. Yeah, I loved it. You're welcome. You're um, welcome. I loved to uh, get this opportunity and experience. It was great. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, but if, if you can it's the name of the, the show. Yeah, sure. Be, yeah. And then they can just go to search it or go through the uh, fringe variety. Yeah. So, LA fringe uh, cabaret. Excellent. Um, what else did we need to do? Uh, oh, if you want to say goodbye here. Oh, you, so you couldn't share it? Oh, no, I couldn't That's share it. That's because it wasn't on public because I only put it to friends. So, when I publish it now, it will be available if you want to share it. It's totally I do want to share it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I can change the setting to public, so that's fine. Okay, so if you want to say goodbye here, ciao, ciao. Uru, bye. Thanks for having us. No worries. <laughs> Adelaide's North. <laughs> that's it.